it's your set time of lifting and rest. We're glad and happy to have you today with us on this beautiful Sunday morning, the first Sunday in the month of June. We thank God for how far He has kept you and how far He has brought you. And we know that this month, all the goodies that God has in place for you, you will get all in the name of Jesus. Thanks for joining us. Kindly let us know where you are watching us from. Go to our comment section, like and share. Invite your friends and family members to join you in this broadcast. Also, we know that God has been faithful. We know you have testimonies, you have prayer requests. Kindly go to our comment section and write it out. And somebody will speak with you. Also, thank you for joining us. Today is going to be an awesome time in God's presence. I implore you to open your heart and hear that word that God has for you today. That word that he will give you to change your situation and change everything in your life. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned till the end. Don't leave. God has a beautiful word for you today. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be in God's presence this morning. I don't know about you, but I believe you are also excited this morning. And I would love us to stand up on our feet and let's worship the name of Jesus. With our hands lifted up, begin to worship Him in other tongues, begin to worship Him in the Holy Ghost. Marco Shabara Dagabo Seketele Bregadosha. Makata le breko she bregedo se bregedo sha makato barade gazunte le bregedo sha mendo barade gazunta le brako sha mendo rade gabasunte le bregedo sha meko barade se tele bregedo sha mako barada gabo se ke tele bregedo sha maka ba 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 shinda da 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 e ramasote ki boko se ki boko sha mako barade she le brogo se meto ze pero se kata meko barade Shalamata, Malo Zeke Bokoto Zegede, Regabo Shin Tele Bregadosha, Male Bregado Shele Bregadosha, Maka Baba Baba was in the day, eh, Rebo was you the da 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 da, Rebo was you the da 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 da, Rebo was you the da 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 da, Rekala Baradagabos in the day. Ala baradi gaba koshe gede gede rakata kamando abayata mendo baradi se tele bregedosha rakata kabaka tala bayata mendo radi gaba sa tele bregedosha makato kabaka to se gede reko baradi ke pokosha reko bakata ezeketesha eko maka eko maka eko maka malonde ki pakonde ki na konda sa male bregedosha te ki makoshe inkredi gaba konde le bregedosha in a comba radi shalamata, ma kaye 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 sa roko boko to zigayata. E kaye 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 sa roko boko zilamata, ma kende kina kende kina kende roko boro diyata ma ma la comba radi shalamata. Me koba me koba me koba me koba reku bakata la makoje inkredu kabaradisha ma le preko zilamata ma le kende kina e kani kani kani. Lord, we worship you this morning. Oh, Ramasota Le Bragada. King of glory, we've come to adore you. We've come to reverence you, Lord. Mako Paradisha. Le Kopo Kotose. Eh, Le Bregedose, Le Bregedose. E Kababa Washina Nanana. Rababa Washina Nanana. E Kababa Washinde. E Kopaka. E Kopaka. Le Bregedose. E Gregedegedegedegedegedebosha. Rakababa. Be that glorified, be that exalted, 
Hallelujah. We magnify Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. We worship you this morning. Oh, Ramaso Telebregosha. Rako Bakatayaba. Allah Baba Bayata. Allah be your name. Oh, Ramaso Teata. Mako Bayata. The world that was and is and is to come. Malako Paradisha. Ekabara Dagabeta. We have come to fellowship in your presence this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ekrabika Zote. Mesu Paradigayata. Hey, Zata. Today we have come to fellowship in your presence. Oh, Ramasote. Le Kotoko Boko Dovasa. Le Kababa Shida. Allah Baba Baba Shada, Red and Abos, go ahead and begin to pray. Fill me with your presence, Lord. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your anointing. Fill me with your word this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, Libra Cosata La Maeta, Eketo Paradesh, Ekata Zekata, Leco Borodo Zegede, Reco Pacata La Mata, Rekete Kedesha. I open up my spirit, soul, and body to receive of your word. Lima Shote Kebosha. E kaba koze ke bayata, ma kaye kombara tiata, ine ndo komboro dosiata, ma kombara di shalomata, ma kaya kasata, roko baba baba shada, fill me with your power, fill me with your love, e ramason telebregeusha, e kaba baba baba basha, that I may do your will, le kadi gabayata, e komboro dosiata, me zose ke zose ke, e kaba koze, ina konde ina konde, me zunga ma zunde. Kama koze, e kalia na makonde brekoze, ina kaya la makonde yata, e kondo robo 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 shira, e kapa ba 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 shina, masoze masoze kapa yata, e kali brakoze, e kabara diosete, mesoze beredoze, inkradi kapa koze, mesote kaya ta, ah bara daga ba yata, why am I no pray for everyone attending this service this morning, e ramasota kapa yata, makata kapa yata, ne participate. Joyfully in the name of Jesus Christ. Le kaba baba bashada, raba baba bashunda dada. Those online and those on site, masaka bayata, makata bayata. The spirit of joy is mainly present in the name of Jesus Christ, causing excitement in this service. This morning, Hallelujah, masaka bayata. We come against every force of destruction, masaka bayata. Melo brother bashunda la bayata. Men and women are changed, boys and girls are changed. Oh, the young in the name of Jesus, Libra Cosa Libra Cosa, Masse Kaba, Messe Kaba, Messe Kaba, Messo Coborodos, Incredo Secretary, E Kapa Kada Kamakana, Elemento Kamande Kayata, E Combo Con de Kebon de Kebonde, E Comba Kana Makana Makana, in on the Q Baradiana Makosha, Messunza Kapasunza Kapasunza, Masse Kada Namayata, Alla Baradagabayata. Lord, I'm beginning to pray for yourself. I'm yielded to the service. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm yielded to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. As this service proceeds, in the name of Jesus Christ, hey, my spirit, soul, and body is connected and yielded totally. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we go through every segment of this, uh, this service this morning, in the name of Jesus, le baro shamata. Makosa, 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 Malebre Gozilla Mata, Makende Comba, Kende Comba, Kendo Comba, Mesula Makanda, Makanda, Rakumba Radita, my spirit, soul, and body are you to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord Jesus. Libra Cosa Lamata, Mekosa, 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 Le Cuba Catayata, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Oh, Ramasata. Kabayata, worship him, Libra Cosa, Makosa, Kazose, Kazose, Ekom Barade Shalamata, Maken de Lepra Cosata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' most precious name, we are praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.
praise the Lord. We're going to be taking our devotional this morning by a man of God, Pastor Martin Zomonwe. And today's devotional says, The Man of Consistency. Our theme scripture is taken from Proverbs 22, verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. The key word for today's devotional says, Your continuous winning is determined by your daily intake of the word of God and your personal fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The secret to a life of constant dominion as a Christian is consistency. Consistency in what you might ask. Consistency in prayers, the study of the word, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and attending services. Is it really necessary to do all this? Must I do it every single day? Can't I take a break and get to it when I feel like it? The answer is no, absolutely not. Taking breaks in your work with God causes you to lose momentum and the drive necessary for you to succeed. When born, a baby cannot exist without milk. Exist without milk, sorry. Whether it is from the mother's breast or through another means, milk is essential for that baby's continued survival and existence on earth. This is what the Bible says in 1 Peter 2 verse 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. In the same manner, your continuous winning is determined by your daily intake of the Word of God and your personal fellowship with the Holy Spirit. If you wait till you feel like doing it, you will never get to do it. At this point, self-discipline becomes essential. Backed by knowing what you stand to gain if you consistently give yourself to the process. For many of us this year, what the Lord is set to do depends on what we are ready to do and give. That is our time, energy, love, etc. Will you follow? Will you patiently learn and be taught by God? Will you dedicate portions of your time each day to the Lord for your development? Remember, God's goal is to bring you to the point of maturity just like Jesus. Ephesians 4.13 says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. This year is almost halfway done. Don't deny yourself and miss out on those great opportunities, favors and blessings that will only come in your secret place with the Father. The man of consistency will do big things with God this year because he's one that God can trust to give the true riches of the kingdom and treasures of the earth. God is actively seeking men who will go deep in the spirit with him. Be one today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We are going to be taking our further study from Philippians 4, 8 to 9. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Hallelujah. Before we take our prayers, Pastor is admonishing us through the devotional this morning to be consistent with our work with God, consistent with our prayer life, consistent with the study of God's word, and consistent with our service in God's house. We should not take a break. Hallelujah. Not because we feel like it. 
but because it has to be done. Hallelujah. And when you give yourself consistently to God's word, you begin to build yourself up to maturity like Jesus. Hallelujah. And then God can trust you with the true riches of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And of this earth, praise the Lord that God has kept in store for us. Let's rise to our feet as we take the prayers together. You repeat after me. Lord, I surrender my time to you today. I open up my spirit to be led by you. I am consistent in my work and fellowship with you this day and always in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's lift up our hands and begin to pray for grace, for capacity that has been released to us to be consistent. Even when the challenges of life encompasses our hearts, we do not run away from God. Rather, we run to Him in the name of Jesus Christ. We are consistent with the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. We do not cower. We do not take a break. We do not observe lying vanities. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We are diligent, not just like the themes scripture says hallelujah with our work with our assignment in the name of Jesus thank you blessed father for we bear good report in Jesus mighty name we've prayed amen
And I slide look into your face And I gaze into your word All I see is you As I look into your face And I gaze into your word Yeah, that's whom you were. 
Jesus as you speak in other tongues. Praise God. Hallelujah. testimonies that came from different church chapters all acknowledging the magnitude of God's goodness in their lives individually in diverse ways. Hallelujah. This first testimony is coming in from one of our online followers. Her name is Sister Jennifer Noye and she says Hallelujah. The Lord's word can indeed be held onto in all situations. For a very long time, I had been taking a particular medication to manage my breathing problems. It became so much that sometimes I would feel the drug lose its efficacy and I would stop for a period of time for my body to desensitize from the drug. A few days later, the situation would be so bad and I'd have to restart the drug again. The longest time I was ever able to stay off the drugs was a week and going back quickly to it was a necessity. But in the third week of April, pastor while ministering in a service said there is someone who has been dependent on medicine for a long time and that he commands that dependence broken and health fully restored. Immediately I heard this. I knew it was for me and I held on to it. I made up my mind immediately to stop the drug and I did. The moment I did, I noticed relief. I continued to observe myself and saw that my health was getting better. Hallelujah. I didn't want to speak out until I had observed myself for a month. As of today, I am still off that drug and in flourishing health. During the winning period, it was as if the pains would rise again. But I would just play pastor's message and reaffirm his word to me. I truly thank God for his healing. Hallelujah. Praise God. This next testimony comes in from our church chapter in Abuja. Mrs. Roland says, Hallelujah. Two weeks ago, my daughter was still severely in pain. When she was just a year old, she was diagnosed with pile. And despite treatments and medications, she continued to suffer from it for the next seven years. Then I was invited to an outreach organized by Life Changers Church in Karimo, Abuja. Coincidentally, it was held in my compound and I made up my mind to honor the invitation. I came in with my eight-year-old daughter and listened all through as the pastor in charge ministered. Suddenly, he called out my daughter and ministered to her personally, casting out that spirit of infirmity. Afterwards, for the first time in seven years, I saw my daughter use the restroom without any feeling of pain. Hallelujah. I was further invited to Sunday service and I came in expectant and ready to give God praise. I am truly grateful and appreciative of what God did for me and my family. Hallelujah. Can you imagine what it means? For a child that is just one year to begin to suffer from pile, experiencing excruciating pain 
every time she had to defecate. Hallelujah. And this continued for seven years. But by the power of God, hallelujah, her story was turned around. Praise God. Now this is from our church chapter in Ugoton, Delta State. Mrs. M says, Praise the Lord. At the beginning of the month, May, I had a lot of bills to take care of in my church. Taking a fair look at my members, I knew it would be futile to depend on them. I therefore handed everything over to God in prayers. As I did so, the Spirit of God led me to take out a personal seed of faith and then another on behalf of my church and sow it to our man of God. I obeyed immediately. Pastor on receiving the alert, called to ask what it was for, and I told him the demand I had placed on the seed. He then released the blessing and said the supply would come exactly as I wanted it to meet all of my expectations. Hallelujah. I wrote out on a plain sheet of paper the bills and started thanking God in advance for the supply as often as I could whenever the bills crossed my mind. Hallelujah. In essence, she made up her mind not to worry, but rather to give God praise whenever worry wanted to set in. Hallelujah. She kept on declaring and insisting that before the 30th of the month, all the bills would be cleared. And verily, God indeed honored her faith and declarations and the word of his prophet. Everything was taken care of with ease before the month ended. Hallelujah. Secondly, pastor had told us that since the month of April, that we had entered into our season of favor. He emphatically said that men, resources, opportunities, and time would favor us. I went to my children's school to see the proprietress over an issue that reported to the school. While I was waiting for her, I saw the bossa and inquired if she had received the receipt I sent to her confirming the transfer I'd made towards my children's school fees. Unexpectedly, she informed me that a discount had been given to my son who was in the nursery class. I asked how much the discount was, assuming a negligible fee of probably 10k. But to my surprise, she told me it far exceeded the amount I had imagined it would be. To be specific, it was more than half of what we were supposed to be. Hallelujah. The most striking thing about all of this was that we could have begun enjoying this since the previous time, but we were unaware of it until in this season of favor. Hallelujah. I just want to return the glory to the God of life changers who always confirms the word of his servants with undeniable proof. Hallelujah. You can imagine in this season when people try to conserve and save money as much as they can. Then you being offered for one of your children a discount of more than what the fees were. Hallelujah. This could only have been by the intervention of God. Hallelujah. This next one is also from our church chapter here in Abuja. Mr. Fortune Obuna says, Two weeks ago, Pastor declared that he sees people getting promotions in their offices. Once I heard it, I held on to it in expectation, desiring it personally, even though I knew I wasn't up for it yet. As God would have it, these words were proved true, because just yesterday at my office, I was promoted from being an assistant superintendent of narcotics one to the position of chief of narcotics. This could only have been by God, who through our man of God had said we wouldn't have to struggle to have opportunities favor us on every side. 
I am extremely grateful. I know that greater things are in store for me. Hallelujah. Last but not the least, Mrs. Favor Obi, see from the Abuja Church chapter says, I want to thank God for the life of my baby, Simon Peter. We came to church last week, Sunday, and there, God's miracle located us. My son had been seriously ill. He was always weak and could crawl only a small distance before he began to pant for breath like someone who had done a serious workout. He was abnormally thin and had a big protruding stom stomach. We had been to several hospitals and received treatment. Hallelujah. Eventually, in some of the hospitals, some of the nurses advised me to get prayers. Hallelujah. So I came to church by a special invitation last week and pastor ministered to my baby. He rebuked the demon of affliction. Hallelujah. And gave me instructions to observe my baby and also give God a dance of praise all through. In the space of one week, I could see a great difference in Simon Peter's strength and stamina. Also, he put on a good amount of weight. Hallelujah. It was evident that the situation had been addressed. I return all the glory to God Almighty for his mighty intervention. Hallelujah. Praise God. All these testimonies could only have come in by the intervention of God. Hallelujah. People came in expectant of their healing, of their miracles, of their financial change. And none who put their trust in God ever had a reason to be ashamed. You right there who is following us from wherever you are. It doesn't matter what the challenge is. It doesn't matter what the issue is or how long he has troubled you. It doesn't also matter the report you might have received from doctors and different scientists. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying to you today, your set time of change has come. Hallelujah. So wherever you are, I want you to lift up holy hands and begin to thank God first of all for these testimonies. Rejoice along with them. Ian Diekege go shavalezo pareza. Ian diakaga valizo paraganeza. Father, we glorify your holy name. We thank you for your mighty move in the lives of all the testifiers. And pray, Lord, that every one of the testimonies are made permanent in the name of Jesus. Ian Diekege go go Sheveloza to all those watching this service right now and desiring their own miracle, we pray right now that none of your expectations shall be cut short. Maligo go Sheverose Valanda, Yagagagaja. You're going to be seeing restoration and transformation in your lives, in your families, in your homes, in your marriages, in your businesses, in your finances. All in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory and all the adoration. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. For in Jesus' precious mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. sessions and begin to thank the Lord for all he has been doing for us, for his faithfulness, for his kindness. I just want us to lift up our hands and just begin to thank him. Thank him for the new months. 
Thank Him for the testimonies. Thank Him for the previous weeks, the previous months, the glorious things He has been doing in our lives as an individual, as an ministry. Just lift your hands and you're going to appreciate His holy name. Father, we give you praise. We thank you. We bless your holy name. We acknowledge all you have to Rosa. Libra Kobasha Kata Mande Libra Kabagadash Kata Labrada Kamondo Zubaragido Shalagaboski Bayada. We thank you for the wholesome testimonies. We thank you for the miracles. We thank you for your supplies. Oh, thank you, Father, for the gift of life. Hallelujah. Oh, Shakamando Lobro Dogobash In Kata Labara Bakato Labando Shanda Kaba Radosh Mendo Kobo Lobobobobobo Zubaragado. Adia in a mondo shi parakata parado sata kabaya in a pondo shi la pacata kapala bonza kabaya in a poco popo 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 suta kalibo sata kabaya in kalibo shaman di kila paya kata e kata la parapapapo supara dagada e komondo shi kata la baya. Thank you, Father, for seeing us through. Thank you for bringing us thus far. It's not by power, Lord, it's by your grace grace and your mercy. We say thank you for your strength. Uh. Thank you for your ability and your wisdom at work in us. Uh. Oh, thank you for guiding and directing us. Uh. Oh, Mali Bashakatabaya. We thank you for all the testimonies. Uh. We thank you for the visitations. Uh. Melo Satakabaya. Indeed, it has been a month of favors for us. Uh. Thank you, Father, for grace for accomplishment. We thank you for your preservation. Oh, thank you for blessing our grace. For delivering us from evil, we say thank you, Father. Oh, Bala Shagada Mando Kula Bayagada. Indeed, you have been faithful to Rosa. Indeed, you have been merciful to Rosa. You have been kind, you've been lovely. De la Sunda la Oh, we love you, Jesus. With all of our heart, we appreciate you, Lord. Thank you for giving your angels charge over Rosa. Thank you for your power and dominion you've given to Rosa. Le Kobo Sata la Bayagada. Inamando Jekete. Kabayada, he la kabababosa, rababosha kabaya, he kabaya shina mondo suta. We thank you for the breakthroughs and the open doors. We thank you for the promotions. We thank you for the increase. We thank you for abundance. Le kobo shakabaya, mene monzo to kopala gadagada, e kabasha gadila bazota taye, in kabaraka, ye baraka, ye maraka, ye ushakatabaya, for the ability to bring the revision. You put in a spirit to pass. Father, we say thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, Shakala Baya Katabaya. For your grace to intercede for a nation and the nations of the earth. We say thank you, Lord. We are privileged. We are honored. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise for you deserve it all. Shata. We have every reason to say thank you. We have every reason to praise your holy name. You deserve our highest praise. You deserve the glory. You are awesome. You are glorious. You are one. We can thank you enough. We can appreciate you enough. Receive all the glory, Jesus. Over our nation, Father, we say thank you. Over the peace in our nation, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for safety. We thank you for peace maleko bo sunta la baya i la baya takata be ye po shakala bayando i ne momo soto baya thank you for every word of prophecy you've declared through the man of a man of god maneko bo sa thank you for none of your word has failed in our misa we give you times for every expectations that are met we say thank you father for la kondo bakalia for the fulfillment of your word in our lives father we say thank you lord mashale 
Pacoskipa, in Amando Lobobo Supaya, in Epoco Satabaya, we thank you for the unusual strength, Le Cobosha, Manacabaya Gabaya, in Le Bobobo Sopoya, in Le Gobobo Shabaya, from January to now, we thank you for every heart rich, we thank you for every program, we thank you for every meeting, Mane Cosa, we thank you for your financial supply, we thank you for abundance of supply, Le Cobo Shapayada, even for every project. We thank you for the supply, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Mane Kobo Shakani Mando Sotobaya, in the Kobo Bobo Shabaya, in the Kobondo Shabaya, for all you are doing with us and through us. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Mane Kabaye, Liba Shata Kabaya, we are la Sondo Koba Babaya, we yield ourselves to you, Lord. Mane Sunta Kabaye, no more Sabaya, in the Bobo Satabaya, we have come confidence in you, Lord. We trust in you, for you've never put us to shame. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for our loved ones. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our brethren. We thank you for all you are doing in your lives. We thank you for all you've ordained for us. Thank you for all you prepared for us. Thank you for your vision in our spirit. Thank you for your mandate you've given to us. We glorify your holy name. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. For the revelation of your word. We say thank you for the insight into your word. We say thank you for giving us understanding to know things. We say thank you. Bosata Rakopo Koto Pala Kabaya Ila Kobosha Yeba Sonda Kabaya. You say these are your foreign dress. We thank you, Father, for we are fresh on every side. Male Koto Bobo Shataya Ina Mama Mama Kobo Sabaya Ile Kobo Satina Manda Kaba. We thank you for this new month. Le Kobo Shila Bayata. Thank you for your word that has gone ahead of us. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Mashenda Kina Mondra. Rahuski, le kabaye shata la baya, ina papa bala kata baya dagada, ille kobo bobo zunta liberado, ina mashenga te makeno zunta, iko bobo bobo shakata la baya, ine bobo bobo sata li baya da, ila kobo za, iene mondo shende le mondo sata li, ille kobo za baya, for your peace all over the nations of the earth, le kobo shata baya, we declare your lordship Jesus, le. Baston de le bayando kobayana, el le kabaya shande le bosata, ila baba baba bashata, ila baba baba bashaba. For using us all of these remains, in changing the lives of men, we say thank you, Father. We are honored, the Lord. Mene kobondo sota taye, ila kaba baba baba ya, ila baba baba bashaba. We thank you for this new phase and all you'll be accomplishing through us. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Le kobondo sonta labaye, li basha kabaya, li kabasha baya. Thank you for your weave done your net. Le basondo brosate, le kobobobobo shabaya, le kobobobosa, le bobobosa, le bobobosa. We pale kobo shalibanda kabaya. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you for good aid. We thank you for good aid. Malashamba la gabaya baya. Limanondo sonta libaye. Le kobondo sonto liba bakataye. La bruce kibando shapala dagada. Ina shata kabaya. We have no zens who have one everywhere. Give him thanks. Dama shata kabaya. Thank him for every project. Liba rakobo no bobo bobo shina makatea. Ika baba. We know for sure every of our expectations are coming to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your holy name. We say thank you, Father, for in Jesus' marvelous name we give him thanks. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Hallelujah, we cry only. Sing Hallelujah, Sing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise God, Sing Hallelujah. Praise is true. 
nothing else but you. No one else but you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I lift up your hands and just worship Him. Glorify His name.
glorify his name. He is the wise and only true God. The Holy One. The Mighty One. He's called the Almighty God. Lord, he is King. None like him and none can ever be compared to him. He is the all-knowing Father, Master of all flesh, Master of all things. Worship him where you are now. Jesus, 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 oh Jesus, you were beautiful, you were kind, you were gracious, so full of wonders how I love you how I praise you Jesus oh Jesus you were beautiful you were kind you're so gracious, so full of wonders. How I love you, how I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The angels sing Hallelujah Praise God Hallelujah 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 We cry holy Hallelujah, 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 praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We cry, holy Jesus, you alone. Yes, you are, Jesus, you are King. Yes, you are, Jesus, you alone. My, 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 Bahira masu pradi adi adi adi. Jesus, you alone. Yes, you are. Jesus, you are King. Yes, you are. So I lift my hands to you. I lift my voice to you, singing, You are the Lord. Yes, You are the King. So I lift my hands to You. I lift my voice to You, singing, You are the Lord. Yes, You are the King. Lord, 
Yes, you are, Jesus, you are King. Yes, you are. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, the angels sing. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, 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 we cry holy, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am a saint, I am a saint, I am a we honor you and we glorify your holy name. We want to thank you for yet another time where your word brings out the best in us and positions us for victory. And we say, Blessed be your name. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to the sixth month a glorious month just a second this month of June, one of the reasons it's so special is because to us as a family, as much as you can dream and dare, God has released grace. And resources, those are things are coming to you in abundance, in abundance, abundance of grace to bring ideas, to birth ideas, an abundance of resources to make them happen the way the Lord drops it in your heart. That's going to be your experience to someone hearing me today in the name of Jesus Christ. So be full of hope. And be bold to dare. Is this is the Mary, Marilyn or something that has a boy. I was told when the Lord gave me a word for someone, the, she's one of our members and I hope she's online, because I heard it again to tell you that this is the month for your son. This is the month for your son. So you might have to take out a day to fast, and cry to God that every hindrance will be broken off his path. Because this month 
there's going to be restoration. Restoration. God, Mrs. Roslyn, thank you. This is the month. And we're going to be praying with you, along with you, during the fasting session. Because God is set. I say God is set. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus forevermore. I want to share with us something and uh, we'll be looking at it all, all through probably the month and um, how far the Lord would have us go. And that is the, the very essence of the Holy Communion and wherever you are watching from there in the United States, ensure to have a glass, you have juice or wine, and get into that glass a biscuit, a bread, whatever you can use as the bread and the communion, and get set for it because I'm going to bless, bless it um, sooner or, or before we take it. Every beginning of the month, we take the communion, and so. Um, in several other months, I've told us some of the reasons or the essence of the communion. But in this month, we're going to look in depthly at the essence, the power and the essence of the communion. Praise God. As the Bible deals with it in different aspects. Praise God. I say praise God. Now, it's amazing what the Lord would do today. Tell somebody, it's amazing what the Lord will do today. Are you ready? So lift up your hands and thank Him one more time. And say, Father, I thank you. Your word is bringing out the best in me. Making me fit to take over my world for you. My heart is open. My spirit is open to receive. Yes, and I'm positioned by your spirit to hear rightly. It is bringing out the best in me and making me fit to take over my world for you. In Jesus' victorious name. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, I want us to look at the, the scriptures. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter eleven. From verse number seventeen. And now we're talking from a dimension that very possibly you never thought about, so that you never heard it this way doesn't make it wrong or right or not right, okay? Look into the scriptures and then you will get to understand what you're being taught. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, now in this that I declare unto you, praise are you not? Okay. That ye come together not for the better but for the worse. Now, um, it's interesting how you start such a verse, and um, you have to understand it's coming from somewhere. But in this very part, he begins to address something more closely. Praise God. Something more closely. And he says, um, what I'm about to say, I'm not impressed so I'm not praising you for this okay and soon we're going to see why why is Paul not okay with what he wants to talk about so let's start from there again verse 17 it starts a new conversation in the bulk of issues he was dealing with now in days that I declare unto you I praise you not so I'm not impressed with you, but I want to say something about what I'm not impressed about. So whatever I'm going to say is a correction to what I want to correct. Praise God. 
And every one of you sit up straight, please. That he come together not for the better but for the worse. Now, how he's dealing with Christians here. He said, We're gathering, or their gathering together was supposed to be for the better, but now it's for the worse. <laughs> oh boy. When a pastor tells you that every one of you have been coming to church to worship God, instead of having a blessing. I've been having a curse. Now, you get so worried and say, what does it mean of this? Does it mean my coming to church is useless or fruitless? The answer is no. Now, you've got to pay attention to why Paul started that way. He says, when you come together, I'm not a, it's supposed to be a blessing or something, but now it's worse. So why? You get to the end of it and see why I'm emphasizing this. Verse 18 now. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. You say, there, there's, you guys are divided. Different opinions, different feelings, anger, wrath, strife. See, there's division among you. In as much as you want to deny it, Paul says, I dare not believe what I hear. And you're going to see why he said he believes it. Not because somebody told him. You see, you see, when you study through the scriptures as a Christian, when you begin to grow in the study of the word, you begin to understand how pastors get their judgments. Now he says, I dare to believe, or rather I believe part of what I heard to be true. Praise God. you see here and so he says for there must be also heresies among you if this kind of division is happening amongst you it means there also are heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you hmm, praise God uh, uh, can we read it in a simpler version so you understand this very verse 19 meaning if there's division amongst you, it means amongst the approved leaders, there are those who are speaking some kind of things that are unhealthy. Now, see what it also says in the Bible in basic English. For divisions are necessary among you in order that those who have God's approval may be clearly seen among you. Praise God. I said, praise God. So there are heresies. But in the midst of this, there are those who are approved of God. It also connotes some of them that are approved that are causing the heresies, that are causing division. Verse 20. So now, he's finished with that discourse. This is the matter that they are having heresies. And deficiencies about. And this you will find on this matter why he believes, why he believes that some of them really the division was there and was not to their betterment. Are you with me? But now when you come together, it is not possible to take the holy meal of the Lord. Now, get back to the King James now it gives you an idea of what the communion was like praise God remember the communion was referred to as the Lord's Supper it was Christ's dinner with the disciples hello I see here so uh, in small congregations you're supposed to have the communion like a, a, a slice of bread not necessarily those small chunks. But you see, thank God for the present day because that has helped us to deal with some of these things, these excesses. Are you see here? Are you see here? Now, when, when you look at what we do today, you might lose the very essence. 
What does the communion connote? Now today I'm looking at the connotation. What does it reflect? What is the, the, the message behind the communion? Not the essence now, the connotation. Not the benefits, the connotation. What does it really connote? When we say we're taking the communion. Now, the first thing you see, it says when you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Now, give me in that baby in basic English so you understand what it's trying to give you. But now when you come together, it is not possible to take the holy meal of the Lord. Now, why did he use that? Because actually it was like a meal. Are you see here? If you're here, say amen. amen. So, why did he use that rendering? You're going to see it next. Let's read it and I'll tell you what I'm trying to make you see. You will get it there. Give me in King James now. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. To eat the Lord's Supper. Why? Verse 21. For in eating, everyone take it before all that his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. <laughs> Hello. You see, this is where some of them Christians and preachers who try to say, see, it must be grapevine. Non-alcoholic. And they're trying to say, you can't use any other thing. It must be, it must be pure on, on alcoholic, non-alcoholic grapevine. Now, answer this simple question. For in eating, everyone take it before other his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunken. And they, oh boy. Are you still here? Are you still here? Yes, sir. Are you sure you're here? Now, say, Pastor, let's not leave the discourse. Are you trying to say wine is wrong or right? Just keep quiet and listen. Praise God. I said, praise God. For in eating, everyone take it before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. Look at verse 22. So you understand what he was dealing with. What? So he's writing. And the reality of this is what is happening. He said, what? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Now you understand why he said in verse 19, uh, 20. Uh, you see here that when you come together it is not to eat the lost supper it is to partake of not to eat he said now because you come with the mind to come and eat the lost supper he said now you're taking it in fact people were taking it without considering somebody else do you understand say oh i'm hungry today <laughs> don't worry <laughs> the lost supper is in church today there's enough to eat and drink. So he gets there and goes for the bread. Boom! And he doesn't think there's a line. He takes a large chunk. Boom! And another man is left hungry. And he takes a cup of wine. He said, well, anybody can eat the bread. All I want is the rewind. The rewind. You know, the wine is what I really want. to say, Praise God. Praise God. And uncle is tipsy. In the very house of God. If you hear, say amen. So you say, what? Have you no houses to eat and to drink in? Read the next thing. Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this up? I praise you not. Now let's read from verse 19 in a simpler version. Do you get the message now? What does it really connote? And why is Paul reacting? Now, that already gives you the first clarity what the communion was supposed to look like. It was called the lost table. Praise God. And instead of just looking at that cup and the wine, you've got to go back and study what are the things that happened that night at the lost table. A lot happened that night. He left the table within the same room, stripped himself naked, and begins to wash their feet. 
just after Judas was gone, the whole thing connoting the same message. And you're going to see it now. Are you with me? If you're here, say amen. Say, I receive understanding. For divisions are necessary. Let's read from verse 18, sorry. For first of all, it has come to my ears that when you come together in the church, there are divisions among you, and I take the statement to be true in part. For divisions are necessary among you in order that those who have God's approval may be clearly seen among you. Verse 20. But now, when you come together, it is not possible to take the holy meal of the Lord. Now he's dealing with, you're not supposed to come with the mentality I'm coming to eat. You know, uh, it's just like some of us, when we think of the communion, when, when, when you think of the sweetness of that wine, do you understand? I mean, <laughs> you, you long for it. Praise God. That's what he's dealing with. Hello? For when you come, you take your food. Now look at what he calls the bread, the Holy Communion. He says, everyone takes his meal before the other. And one has not enough food. And another is the worst for drink. Verse 22. What? Have you not houses to take your meals in? Or have you no respect for the church of God? Putting the poor to shame. What am I to say to you? What am I to say to you? Am I to give you praise? Certainly not. Say certainly not. I see here. Now. Are you with me now? Go to verse 23. King James now. And now he begins to go in. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you. Hello? That means Paul pauses. And so what I'm going to explain about the Lord's table or the Holy Communion, taking the, or partaking in the Holy Communion, is that now, listen to this, what I want to share with you about it and why I'm reacting to this, it's not just because we practice as a Christian, but because this was what the Lord himself revealed to me to give to you. About what the Holy Communion is. That means, whatever we're going to read here might not have been seen in the writing of any other apostle because this was a revelation of the communion given to Paul for the people to help them get out of that mistake. If you're here, say amen. And truly, you won't find it anywhere else. And he tells you the reason why. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks he break it. That was supposed to be dinner. But something happened that night. The dinner that was supposed to be the normal eating with Christ became a dinner of initiation. Thank God for that night. I said, what does it connote? He break it and said, take it. This is my body. Meaning this is no more food. This is my body. And it's only going to be broken once. Oh, glory to God. And it is broken for you. When next Sunday we begin to look, in, look into the scriptures, the essence why the body was broken. The essence. Why his blood had to spill and his body was broken. You're going to be so full of the spirit starting from this minute. Glory to God. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Ko Rama Sibra Ogadishta. So God, Jesus says, you got to take this bread every time. Just like I'm doing tonight. But when you do it, do it in remembrance. And so it tells you the verse before. He said, what I've received, that the same night he took the bread and broke it. Haven't given thanks. 
the bread of communion which you take. And then it says, Eat! It is my body broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25. After the same manner, so he waited, they ate the bread. Meaning the bread had to pass around. And they ate. Hello? They all ate in unison. Not haphazardly. They took the bread. Having bread, blessed it. And shared it around. And everybody had a portion of the bread. And so they ate the bread. Praise God. I said praise God. After the same manner also he took the cup. Haven't taken the cup. Now, the Bible didn't tell us what was inside the cup. It would be foolish of anyone and irrelevant to make it a matter of discourse. The verses before already told you, the ones they were using in this church got them drunk for those who drunk beyond measures. Are you see here? So it's irrelevant trying to argue whatever was used. And just for the record, you want to argue it? They accused Jesus of drinking with hooligans. And I bet you that was not non-alcoholic wine. It must have had some level of wine. Remember, those are purely tapped wines. They didn't have processing machines like our day. Praise God. Are you see here? When he had stopped saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood. That is the essence. The cup. Whatever was inside, it could have been water. The Bible didn't tell us what was served that night. He took the cup. When he saw saying, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. Glory to God. What's the New Testament? A new order. Say a new order. A new decree. Meaning, Whatever you had believed before as apostles or as Jews in Judaism, whatever you've been born from as a, a free thinker, an atheist, an idol worshiper, whatever that is, the moment you hold that cup and say, This is a Christ, I'm a, as in, I'm taking the Holy Communion, the moment you hold that cup, he said, There's a new order in your life. You are being brought into a new order. And that order is the order of Christ. He said, this one is done. is enacted by my blood. A new way of doing things. A new life. A new kind of living. He said, but this is done in my blood. And then he said, this do ye. Now look at this. As often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So he didn't put a timeline to how often you can take it. So you say, ah, it's a holy communion. You know, you, you have to take it once in a year, once in a day. You know, it's a holy thing. Jesus said, as often, as often. Now, when you read closely, you find out this. He received of the Lord at the same night. It was not just a statement. Because this last part, he gave them. You find that Paul literally was in the vision watching that night. By vision, he was seeing what was happening and heard words that some of us didn't even write about. Now go to verse 26. Say, living amen. amen. For as often as he eats this bread and drink this cup, you do show the lost death till he comes. Let's look at this in a simpler version. I wanted to see what the Bible in basic English says. For whenever you take the bread and the cup, you give witness. Oh, glory to God. Ah! Witness. Say, I'm a witness. To the Lord's death till he comes. You show. How do you show it? It becomes active. 
We're going to talk about this later on. I don't want to go into it so I, I can maintain the line of what I have to teach you today. He said, you show a weak, you, you give weakness to the Lord's death till he comes. That's not to say, okay, I'm taking it to show that Jesus died. I believe he died. No. It means you're witnessing that he died for something. There's an essence that died. That death came. Glory to God. And they say you do often, 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 often. How so often? As often as Satan tries to challenge you. As often as situations try to put you down. As often as guilt tries to wear you out. As often as accusations rise around you. So you take it. Glory to God. There's something new you want to do. Glory to God. You take it. You take it. You take it. Glory. You enter into new relationships. Like marriage. You take it. And say, I know that we are marrying in Christ. He died to give us a peaceful home. Glory to God. Listen to this. You do that in your marriage. Or anytime you catch the revelation. Say, ah, but we didn't do it when we got married. When you can't revision, you do it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Satan is going to lose his grip. All them curses from home will paralyze. You know, my foundation, I had a lot of things. It will die. It says, whenever you take it, you, you give witness, Karimo Fufahila, to the lost death. You know, I'm saying this. A lot of light is beaming in my spirit. Say, I'm a witness to the Lord's death. Till he comes. Ugh. The Bible said, he shall reign. He shall reign. Till all his foes are kept under his feet. He said, now he's reigning. But there's an enemy that has to be put under. He has been defeated, but it's still raining. He said, that enemy that has been defeated, that is raining, will be defeated. He said, when that enemy is totally defeated, then will come the end of that rain. He said, but now we see death defeated and put under our feet. And that enemy shall be defeated. Hallelujah. How will that happen? How will that happen? The church. He said, then we'll come to that point when we've defeated him by faith. We are still on the earth and now we can go out in the journey and accidents are showing forth and you don't die by accidents. You get to the point, they hit your vehicles, it does not respond to death. Things fall out of your hands, they don't destroy because death cannot be there. Oh, Shaka Mundo Vrahila. Not death! And then you're not the one saying, death, where is your power? Death, where is your sting? And he told you why will we reign over it. The sting of death is sin. And Jesus has destroyed sin and said he can never reign over you anymore. And then he came and destroyed him that has the power of death and was the power of death and set all men free who all their lifetime were held in bondage to the captivity of fear. So fear is a power of death. I heard the minister once say that the power of death is sin. I said, no, the power of death is not sin. The power of death, the Bible tells us, is fear. The reward of sin is death. That's wages. Are you see here? The Bible tells us 1 Corinthians 15. The later verse towards 50 something. It says the sting of death. Of death is sin. 15.56. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. Now look at this. The sting of death is sin. And the strength... What's the word strength? What empowers sin to be able to make death to sting you with sin? I'm The church has got to grow. 
Now, when you read this, you see what Christ has done. He said, you, you are witness to his death. The Bible says he abolished the law in his flesh. Do you understand? And now the Bible is showing you that the sting of death, death, death stings you. Pow! Like when, when a, a viper stings. And you got 5 to 15 minutes, otherwise you die. That sting that passes the venom is sin. And what empowers the sting to bring death? is the law the laws of moses condemned the whole world jesus jesus destroyed sin in his flesh and abolished what empowers sin the law glory to god he rendered it non-active and it says when you take the cup of communion it's showing that the old law has been scattered and re rendered useless. Do you know what that means? It means that you cannot die anymore by death. No way! Are you see here? How do I... Did you get what I just showed you? <laughs> Hey, 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 I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of what? The man who is in charge of fear, that wields his authority, fear is the authority of death. Jesus defeated his master, Satan, and set you free all men, all men of all times and of race free from the bondage of fear. Do you understand what that means? That's what the Bible says, there's no fear in love. And where is love today? Love is not a feeling. Love is a nature. The Bible said the love of God is in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Do you know what that means? It means that what fear can do in your life has been handled because God's love is in your life. Are you see here? Now let's read it. Hebrews 2.14 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. Hello? Now, why did it say flesh and blood? Because death reigns to terminate the ministry of life through the blood. Hallelujah. He also himself likewise took part of the same flesh and blood that through death called Nasilo. The same thing that authorizes fear. The end point of fear. He took path of death that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is who the devil so when Satan wants to kill you what does he do he throws fear around you so Jesus said you know what I'm gonna fix you how am I gonna fix you I'm gonna use what you use to bring men to end ministry of living I'm gonna die and when he met with death he overcame death glory to God I went to the man who wields death as a tool that is the devil himself and look at verse 15 and delivered them do you understand shout I'm delivered he destroyed him that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death and deliver them who through fear of death don't be afraid never you want to succeed out of fear of failure I was shocked last year into this year when the Lord told me many are trying to succeed because they are afraid of failing 
How do you live in a trap? So I refuse to fear for my future. Look at what it says. And deliver them who through fear of death. I want to take note of the next language. Read with me one to go. Where all their lifetime. Look at that. Subject to bondage. How? Fear of death. So people give up things. Because they say, people will die if you go that way. The fear of death. The fear of failure. They give themselves to vices. For fear. And look how it says, all their lifetime, we're subject to bondage. Everyone that has been in bondage today, you are set free. Are you still here? What a glorious gospel. This is what he said when he said, you show his death. <laughs> Do you understand? Your witness in that he died to destroy death so that sin and fear can no more rise in your life. Say, so death is a thing of the past in my life. I don't die. <laughs> Somebody is feeling feverish. And it, I mean, the thing is getting worse. It, they've not even told you what it is. It's ordinary cold. Gnashing of the thing. It's, God, I don't want to die. God, I don't want to die. You will die that way. Someone feels odd. And say, let me manage it and observe myself. And suddenly it gets worse. He said, please take me to the hospital. And then they get to the hospital. And the doctor says, sorry, you should have come earlier. Say, so, doctor, I don't understand. Were you feeling this way? I'm feeling that way. He said, yes. He said, doctor, why are you asking these questions? Can you come out straight? He said, well, um, the test I told you to do, um, um, pastor, doctor, please, can, can, can you be, speak freely, speak freely. Now there's tension rising. What is he trying to say that he's not saying, oh God, let it not be what I'm afraid of. Let's not be what I've been thinking and praying. You should not be, oh God, I don't want to die. And doctor says, sorry. Um, you should have come earlier when the signs were there. You should have noticed and come to us. You see, that's why we always admonish you that you should, no, and no matter what it is, just come to the hospital and let's check you up. Check you up and inflict fear. And then the man is shaking and the woman is shaking. So doctor, please tell us, what is our faith? Now, they leave F-A-I-T-H, faith to F-A-T-E. What lies ahead of us? What's our condemnation? Pass it on us. And say, well, the results are showing that your kidney will never work again. And even if we trans want to do a transplant, because you didn't come on time, every other organ that we ought to tear you through, you are weak. Now there's nothing we can do. We'll just have to do dialysis. And uh, well, we'll manage you. And um, the bad news is it's going to get worse. And you might, you might have to lose a part of your body or be confined to a wheelchair or something. And, uh, um, and because of the state of your blood, you know, you, you know, you're showing signs of hypertension. So right now, there's a high tendency that you might have partial stroke. I mean, the man who was talking to the doctor suddenly starts feeling numb. <laughs> Say, oh, okay, please, um, you see, this is what we're trying to tell you. I say, well, you can't go home anymore. A week later, the guy is numb. The doctors told you time after now. But fear. Because when you were hearing those things, it was like you were passing a death sentence. It was, you were not just hearing that an organ that can be restored by the power of God was, being, was malfunctioning. What you were hearing was a death sentence. Brothers and sisters, deliver yourself. You've been delivered in Christ. Galatians 5 1. Stand firm in the liberty where Christ has made you free. Be not entangled again. Be not entangled again by the, with the yoke of bondage. What is the yoke of bondage? He told you fear kept men in bondage. Are you see here? Praise God forevermore. 
I think we should give the Lord a shout. See, I'm delivered. Say it again. He's delivered me. So, what does it connote? He says, when we take the communion, when we take the communion, we witness why he died till he comes. Now look at how many times fear tries to mess you up. One evil news tries to mess you up. Now you know what to do. Glory to God. Are you see here? Verse 27. But that, there's more. There's more. Say there's more. We're looking at the connotation, okay? But I, I, I just couldn't leave that aside. Wherefore? Now, because we didn't come to eat and be full and be drunk. When we take it, we take it as a witness that Jesus died for something. His blood was spilled for something. His death, his body was broken for something. He died and resurrected for something. So because of this, whosoever shall eat this bread with the, with the hope of eating as a gluten because you're hungry and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. Now, you're going to see something now. Was he now dealing with unworthily having to do with gluttony? No. Something bigger. Something bigger. And that's what I want to see today. Glory to God. You drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty. Not of sin. Look at that again. If you drink it unworthily, what did he say? Read it together. What's going to happen to you? Such a person shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. You'll be guilty of failing in the essence. Verse 28. Now he says, but let a man examine himself. So before you go to the bread and take from that table, because you were to serve yourself, you pick it yourself. You go to the table. Everyone went to the table to pick it up. But of course, if we do that in churches today, we'll spend the whole day until the next day. We won't finish. Are you see here? Now he says, you go there, but before you step in there, he says, examine himself or yourself. Haven't examined yourself. He says, so let him eat and drink of that cup. Let's read on. You will soon understand why. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. And this is what is the next thing he wants you to see. The first he has dealt with, the gluttony of eating out of greed. Like it's not for eating. To be full. When you eat the bread and take the cup. It's to show the essence why he died. But now he went further to say, when you take it unworthily, don't take it unworthily. He said, examine yourself. Because if you do it unworthily, now you understand why we started from verse 18, when it says, I'm speaking it to your shame and not to, to praise you. See what it says? You are eating it to domination of yourself. Why? And this is bigger. This is bigger. To take the cup and the bread unworthily, he said, you bring domination because you are not discerning. That means you are not doing it out of revelation. Your spirit has not caught the picture. Why we even do it? What does it mean? Amazing. Look at how long you took it from when you were young to date. And men don't even know what it means. They don't have a revelation. So Paul says, what I'm teaching right now came by revelation. I ain't taking it just religiously and getting fooled. He said, not discerning the lost body, you bring damnation on yourself. For this cause, oh, Kai Mosafiko Pro in us. Look at how many times Satan twats God's good intention to the damnation of men that it was for to upgrade them. So he said, for this cause, what is the cause? Taking the communion unworthily, the bread and the blood. He says, you're taking the body, you're eating the body. And drinking his blood unworthily. For this cause many are weak. And sickly among you. And many die. When you use the word sleep. 
because Paul uses a more spiritual language. He knows that death has been defeated in Christ. So like Christ, he uses the word because he will not identify with death. To identify with death means he has empowered death to walk through his tongue. They say many sleep, meaning they die. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Now, this was why he said, I believe that there's a part of truth because already he could look into the church. Hi, his brother this, he's sick. Hi, his brother that, he died. Hi, his brother this. So he said, I believe part of it because it's already evident that many of you are sick and dying. And yet the lost table is the table of health. Are you see here? I just say, yeah. Do you say, man? But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Say, amen. amen. That's what he's saying now. He said, why am I writing to you this way? To rebuke you. Because when you are rebuked, the condemnation that's for the world, which is sickness and death, you'll be delivered from it. 33. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, what did he say you should do? Wait for one another. 34. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. He's dealing with the first part again. That he come not together unto condemnation. Now, he says, and the rest matter. I will set in order when I come. Say amen. amen. Now, let's look more into the, what it means to take it unworthily. Now, you're going to see why he calls it taken unworthily. Chapter 10 of the same book, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Is somebody getting blessed? I said the connotation of the communion is amazing world over. How many don't even have it? They understand what it is. Uh, they told us when we take communion, it means Christ died for us. <laughs> Verse 16. And I like to start that way. Glory to God. The Oh boy. Wait a minute. He called it the bread and what? The blood of Christ. Now look at what he calls it. One to go. When you held that cup, if only you knew what it was. Look what it says. Verse 16, one to go. The cup of blessing which we bless. I know. Come on, so when I hold that cup, I'm holding a blessing. The cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many. Now. Get this. We're going to see why many fall sick and die. Taking it unworthily. So it says. When I take that bread. And hold that cup of blessing. See what it's showing us. For we being many. Are what? One bread. Oops. Before we continue, I want to hold a thought in mind when you read this. And you're going to see that thought in Romans chapter 6. From verse number 1. The Ephesus is 4 to 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Verse 2. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now every member of this house has to listen to this message. Again and again and again. Know ye not that so many of us say we are many. As we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. Every one of us. We are baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Read the next thing. 
that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Read verse 5 there. I said that's where the emphasis starts. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Hello? Hello? In the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. When? The moment I came out of the water. Not in the future. He says when you went into the water, you acknowledge it showed that you died in him in the cross when he died. So when he resurrected by the glory of the Father, we also resurrected by the glory of the Father. He said, and he resurrected into the newness of life. Now look how this says, for if we were planted together, that's we died in him in death. Hello? We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Now he's not going to resurrect. He has resurrected. That means when I came out of the water, I came out with a life that never dies again. <laughs> now, when I read everything about the, old, the, 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 the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and see what Jesus did, I ask myself, was this when he died or before he died? If it was before he died, it's not good enough to describe me. <laughs> oh, Ramando save the handy. So I'm looking for what life did he live? after he died and resurrected that is the life that defines my life and when you study closely you find out something Jesus in his flesh not as a ghost others who died and were seen they saw ghosts so they couldn't touch them because you could see a ghost add up to a sorcerer invoking the spirit of that dead as a ghost and you do like this boom they have to empower you. You could hear them or see them from your spirit. And you wake up. You know they are there, but you can't touch them. Now, Jesus appears. And doubting Thomas shows up. Uh-huh. Because I was not around, you think you can fool me? You saw a ghost. If it's him, I knew where they stabbed him. It broke through his rib. I knew how they nailed his hand. It broke through those bones. Nothing on earth is going to heal those bones. Micah the prophet says, talking about Christ, he said, what are these holes in your hands? And what are the holes in your side? The hole in your side. He said, these are the holes that were given to me by my friends. Meaning when you go to heaven, you're going to see those holes. It's the mark of the price it paid for your salvation. And so, he said, if it is true that he's not dead, I'm going to dip my hands into those holes. Remember when he was saying it, Christ wasn't there. And I'll dip my hand, if it were, into his bowels. You can tell me he's alive. And suddenly, on the second visit, Christ waits for all of them to be present. And then he appears. And he never had a door knock. Pum, pum, pum. <laughs> you see why we can travel by the Spirit and be anywhere we want to be. I said, where were you? We were there with you. Why? Is the newness of life advantage. Say, I have the newness of life advantage. Now, Christ shows up. The door is locked. And he appears, boom. <laughs> Immortality at work in the flesh. The flesh has been resurrected. Do you understand? That is what Paul said. We are praying. When we begin to pray in tongues and we are groaning, is to put away this mortality so that our flesh can begin to respond to divinity. Listen, brothers and sisters, until the church attains that realm, we are not being, going to be caught up because that is what it means to put on a new flesh. Do you say amen? So what are you talking about? Go and ask Ezekiel. <laughs> Praise God. Are you see here? He appears. And then he tells the young man, he said, all hell, fear not. <laughs> He's a ghost. Everybody takes cover. <laughs> what is this? This man died. We've seen no manner of this in this place. Oh. It is I. Thomas, come here. 
And Thomas is like, <laughs> say, Thomas, come here, it's me. Put your hands in my hands. Ha <laughs> la la la. And Thomas put his hands, boom. It wasn't a wind. It was that same flesh that before the crucifixion was on his shoulders and he knew that same hand. But now the hand has become a glorified body. Brothers and sisters, your body would have been tormented and killed. But when you came to Christ, it put on a new immortality grace. Put your hand there. And he reached in. Ah, 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 ah. And the hand passed through. It is the master. And then he said, No, no, no. Reach to my side. And he puts his hand there. He's feeling a physical beam. And he shouts, Master, my Lord. And Jesus said unto him, Because thou hast seen me, thou believest. Oh, brothers and sisters, the blessing is not in seeing and believing. The blessing is never in seeing and believing. If I say it, I'll believe it, that Jesus is Lord. If God will do it, no. Look at what it says. Blessed are they. And that is where we come in. We are the people who were born into the blessing of Christ. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. And Peter is saying the same thing. He said, of what salvation you rejoice with joy unspeakable. He said, not having seen, you heard of it, and you received that engrafted word that brought you salvation, and you rejoice with joy unspeakable. What a blessing in your life. Hallelujah. Say, so you have not seen him, you love him. As though you have seen him. How can that happen? The Holy Ghost witness in our hearts that the love of Christ is real brothers and sisters don't let that love die wave your hand say Jesus is real you know I, I love the scriptures to meditate on it because in meditating of it you metamorphose the life of God in you begins to consume you into that immortal man shout I can do all things Are you still here? I said, are you still here? So he said, the cup of blessing which would bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which would break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many, now you understand what that means, are one bread. What does it mean? His body is bread. He told them, Except you eat my body, which is bread for you. You cannot be saved. Until you drink my blood, you have no life in you. They say, uh huh? You the son of Joseph who eats your body and drink your blood? Jesus said, Every one of us, every one of us, every one of us is one body. And that body is the body of Christ. Are you seeing here? For we be many and one body, one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Do you understand? That means we all have a share in the body as his body. So when you were eating that bread, you were eating you. <laughs> Do you understand? You are me. I am you. So it says when you hold that bread, we are, you are saying that we are one. The musketeer law, all for one, one for all. For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Verse 18 now. Behold, Israel after the flesh, are, they, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? Did you see it? God says only the Jews should partake of the altar. What say I then? That the idol, now we're going to jump, okay? I see here. I said, I see here. 
Now, why did he say that to this essence? Verse 23. Why did he use that connotation? All things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not, but all things edify not. Go to the next verse. Next verse, please. 24. 24. Let no man seek his own but every man another's wealth. Do you understand what that means? So, Pastor, so how does these two relate? To take the bread unworthily is to seek your own. It says to take it unworthily means when you live in bitterness and strife. So it says examine yourself. Because if you have it against a brother, and you're taking that bread, you're actually saying, we are one. Not just the essence, the communion connotes that we are one body and one flesh. One blood runs through us all. Are you see here? So when you take it and you have strife with another brother, you are taking it unworthily because you're not discerning that you are one. So you're breaking the essence, you're breaking the code, the code, and Satan can strike. So he says, because of this, Many fall sick. Many die because they do not discern the lost body. They do not discern the lost body that we are one. So they eat it greedily and leave the other person. I don't care about you. They don't look into one another's affair. And because of the lack of concern, lack of emotions, to understand that if you do it to this brother, you're doing it to yourself, not to Christ, to yourself. And you take that communion, you will definitely be sick. Things will go wrong. Now look at how many times Christians in the house of God live in dissensions with themselves, live in arguments with themselves, that they carry on into hate. And they all come to the table. That means on this table, Whatever you have against me and against you is rendered of none effect. We are one body. And they take it. And they're taking an oath of commitment to be one and to die in the interest of one as one. And step aside and act in hate. Brothers and sisters, Satan will so buffet you, you wouldn't understand. The what should have brought you security and health and safety has become your own doing. Look at the husbands and wife who go to church not having that understanding. So he said, before you take the communion, stop and examine yourself. Do I have ought before another? The same words Jesus used. So when you come to the altar and you saw it, the communion which we bless at the altar, because that's where it is. He said, before you give your offering, stop oh, and examine yourself. If you have ought against your brother, go and settle it. He said, else your offering will be turned against you. That was in the law. In the New Testament, partaking of the bread and br communion connotes that we are one in Christ. And Christ in us is one. That though we are many, there is no difference between us. There is no color or race that separates us. And listen to this. That makes you understand the potency. I'm going to share that next Sunday. The potency that if a man who is born by your parents is not born again. When you took a communion with a brother in church, that person is more of your brother than the brother who was born by your father. They begin to understand why I say, do good unto all men, especially... Your priority is a household of faith. Because that man and yourself, you are the same. It's one blood that runs through two of you. If they took a spiritual DNA, they will not see your name different. They will see all of you as one. And what would they see? Christ in everyone. Not in portion. You are 100% Christ and he's 100% you. And then he's 100% us. Glory to God. Are you see here? So say, examine yourself. And what a blessed time to examine yourself. We're going to take the communion right now. Wherever you are, 
check your heart check your heart are you filled with hate towards a brother it's time to release it you need to be healthy you need to stay alive that's what he came to give you but you don't come to that table some someone say well if that's the case i'd rather not take it that's the latest one no 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 thank you pastor i've heard you that means i'm not going to take it because i'm not going to let this person go you know what you're saying satan finish me finish me finish me you don't stay in satan's den and not be consumed because he's a roaring lion you can't stay around this den and not be consumed Ephesians 5 tells you, quench not the spirit or grieve not the Holy Spirit. He said, do away with all strife, malice, brawl, unforgiveness. Do away with them. For this is the quench, the, they make him, they, 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 they slow and remove his functionality in your life. Bitterness, sadness. He said, let a man examine himself. And today the communion is right before you. Connoting that death and failure is out of your life. I said, death and failure is out of your life. Now I'm going to take a second and every one of you, you're going to go get your table ready. The bread and the wine, whatever you want to use as the cup. The Bible said the cup. So whatever you want to put inside is up to you. But make sure you're not taking alcohol that will get you drunk. Because that's unworthy. We read it, praise God. So get something, okay? Quickly. We'll take a break in a second. We'll be right back. I could ever reach for you are my everything the very air I breathe you are the very air I breathe the very air I breathe you are my fortress the lifter of my head you are my light, all I could ever reach for. You are my everything, the very air I breathe. And my soul says yes, yes, can it in Yes, oh yes, my soul says yes. Oh yes, oh yes, and my soul says yes, lift up your hands, yes, oh yes, oh yes, my soul says yes, oh yes, oh yes, to your will and your ways, my soul says yes, healing is taking place in someone's body now. Oh yes, my soul says yes. It's a quiet back in me now. Yes, oh yes. Oh my soul says yes. Yes, oh yes. My soul says yes. Oh yes. Yes, my soul says yes to your will. Yes, to your ways. Yes, oh yes. I am a machine, a Thank you, Lord. Now I'm, I'm looking at a lady um, who is not on the light complexion side, and you are bitter. And I'm looking at men. 
travel through your life and you're finding it so difficult to let go and all the time I was talking the past few minutes the Lord was telling you let go let go let go let go lift up your two hands and say Lord I say yes say it aloud you've got to shout it to yourself to silence that devil who say you want to let go listen to this the reason every relationship failed was because you had bitterness with the first that you never healed from and so you reacted to every other good one that came thinking they were like the first and because your expectation was negative you provoked it in the main and you are filled with sad experiences and the wrong opinion of men today the Lord wants to heal you and restore your home and restore your life and restore everything put your hands up and shout it yes I let go so shout it that heaviness is leaving you your husband could have wounded you your spouse could have wounded you someone could have betrayed you let go the love of God is in your heart it's not in you to hate the love of God is in your heart and you love just like Christ and this is the message that while we were yet sinners Christ loved us and gave himself for us and he expects you to do the same where you are you know you're not born again you know that you're living in bitterness right now put your right into your chest and say these prayers with me dear father I acknowledge I've been on the wrong path I ask and receive your forgiveness now in the name of Jesus I receive the cleansing power of the Holy Ghost in my heart I believe he died I believe he rose again I believe he purged my sins and he came to give me a new life I believe if I was the only one on earth that had sinned he still would have loved me to die for me and now I confess Jesus you are Lord of my life now I heal from every offense I heal from every guilt I heal from every condemnation Satan you have no hold over me anymore I am free eternal life is mine now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth wherever you are right now lift up that bread and that cup before the Lord as you take that communion now every pain every disease every setback every state of struggling whatever Satan has had manifest in your life and destiny I declare they are rolled away by the blood of Christ and I declare as you take that communion and new and living ways open to you in this month of counted all joy new and living ways open to you those experiences are turned into victory for you by the power of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus the hold of oppression and infirmity is broken from your bodies broken from your blood dumbness is released to speaking now paralytic oppressions and epileptic cases are released now every demon of torment is gone from you now I address cases of satanic oppressions they are gone in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Heavenly Father you are free that communion is blessed as you take it now you are empowered to experience the miracle in your body in your finances in your career in Jesus name take it in faith and when you take it give him praise quickly Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Eternal life is flowing through my body. Divinity is flowing through me. Addictions are dead. 
weakness is gone. Yes, I walk in victory this month. I consent that you die to give me victory. Glory to God. I consent that you came to give me ease and prosperity. He said, Cost is any man that hangs on the tree, and you will hang on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham may come upon me. I walk in the blessing all through this month. By this communion, I assent that you died to cause the blessing to come to me. And the blessing is what I've taken. And so I function in the blessing this week. All through this month, every day of my life, with my family, the blessing is working. By this communion, I have saints that this is what you brought to me. And so to be my family all through this month. And upon everyone that hears me today, in the name of Jesus Christ, shout a resounding amen. amen. Hallelujah. You see, on your own, when you do that, you take time to pray and pray, pray. There's going to be a burst in your spirit. A burst. And right now, a Satan just left somebody's soul. You are free. Those joint pains are gone. Your muscles are released. Your visions are released. You are free. Your speech is returned. Your knees that were aching are gone. The ankle joints and the knee joints you were suspecting cold they are gone check it a demon just left someone the chest pains are gone yes feeling of lumps in the breasts is gone check it you are free and totally free and you are free indeed whomsoever the son of man just set free the bible says is free indeed come on go ahead and give the lord praise hallelujah Blessed be your holy name. And we worship you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's honor the Lord with an offering quickly. Wherever you are, you use the platform, lifechangers.org slash give online to give your offering or any other account that is showing. All I usually say is screenshot it so you can use it at the end of the day. You can give in dollars or pounds or euro, whatever you want to do it. Praise God. And the platforms and the waves you can use are all there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the offerings our hands are blessed. Even as we honor you with it as a token of our love and honor to your name, we thank you because we receive the blessing of giving in our lives, in our families, in Jesus' name. Quickly, let's see what the Lord has to say for the month of June. And that is Psalm 63, verse number 5. I give you praise my soul come on say this aloud with me one to go my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips and God says this month is your month of counted all joy and listen every day of this month you will begin to count your surpluses yes thou crown is a lot the, the year with thy goodness and my path, my path drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. Say everything I do this month, I have high recognition and patronage. The valleys are also covered over with corn. They shout for joy. They also sing. God say this is your month of counted of joy. And I declare, it's a month of springs. And I declare that things will spring up joyfully in your life. Where you are filled with heaviness and struggling, joy and flourishing will spring up in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's a month of fruitfulness and increases. Jeremiah 23 verse 3. The month of fruitfulness and increases. Hallelujah. Now let's take the declaration for the week. Say, I'm ready. You've been waiting for it. And you will experience it this week. And now, and the ransom of the Lord, as I said, 5 verse 10, shall return and come to Zion with songs. And what? 
and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness. Say, I'm obtaining gladness now. And joy. Look at the next thing. What God is saying this week is going to be a week full of gladness and joy and sorrow and sign shall flee away. As I'm speaking right now, such experiences that result in that are out of your life for good. They are out of your career for good in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I declare that this is your week of joy and gladness. Give the Lord a shout. Therefore I decree that this week the all of joy and gladness shall be heavy upon you. You will go out and return with bounties. Everywhere you turn, it shall be filled with favors. No one will hurt you or harm you this week. You shall be very far from oppression this week. The Lord is helping you rightly and timely all through this week. The mighty hand of God is upon you, causing you to take triumphant steps all the way this week. I see someone with endless laughter because of what the Lord is delivering to your hands this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. No sickness will thrive in you this week. I said no sickness will thrive in you this week. Say I'm exceptional. In all you do this week, you'll be exceptional. You are exempted from destruction and depressive attacks all through this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is helping you and that early this week. Come on, say this with me. My week is filled with blessings and favors from God. I walk victoriously in every way and everywhere I go because it's in me and with me guiding me into triumph. Things are naturally falling in line for me because I have a goodly heritage. The Lord is lifting me so high in victory today. I'm blessed. My day is blessed. I'm filled with fruitfulness in all I do today. God's mighty hand of favor is upon me. I make tremendous progress daily. All through this week. Hallelujah! Praise God. You know what? The confessions are going to be available on Telegram and on WhatsApp. Do well to use it every day. Every day. And God has helped us so that every day from Monday through to Friday, the 6 a.m. West African time, GMT plus one, 6 to 7, 14 in the morning, we're having a time of intercession for nations. And I also come up to minister by God's instruction and under his anointing into your day. What testimonies we took today? What testimonies? I felt so blessed. Someone said, I was always afraid. But since I joined the prayer, my mom's health has improved. And I realized that the fear has gone. Now I have what to expect every day as pastor speaks into the day and I'm seeing it come to pass in my life. Another said, I, I, I wake up full of new inspirations. So not like I never used to experience it before, but every day I just seem to get a new idea from God how to face the day. And said, those times where sometimes, some days you wake up feeling so sad and heavy, he said, no more happens and it will never happen again. Praise God. And you know what? I also want to celebrate your testimony next Sunday. And take it also during the prayer session. So send your prayer requests and encounters and testimonies of healing and other miracles to plus two three four nine zero seven one five nine four seven nine four. And of course, if you're already a life changer, you know that there, that is a number with which you can get into the counseling session with us. Praise God, like some of you are already doing. And we're glad to know that God's word is working in your life and things are improving in the situations you sent to our notice. And I guarantee you, this month is going to be all round blessings for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I said, praise God. And like I told you, on the 23rd 
of this month of June, we are having night of healing and miracles. And the time is 5 p.m. GMT plus one. And get everyone you know that needs a healing and a supernatural touch of God. Okay, get them to register at the WOH Waves of Healing abbreviated WOH.lifechangestouch.org. Get that case registered. And we're going to have a platform to talk with you and bring you on set on that crusade ground. I'll be able to minister the hand of God to you wherever you are. There's going to be a special session for special cases that are not on that crusade ground, healing ground field. Praise God here in Abuja. But for those who are around Nigeria, Abuja, you can come to um, the Panteka field at Umpape Road, Umpape, Abuja. Praise God, Nigeria. Remember 23rd, the time is 5 p.m. GMT plus one. Get everyone ready for it. It's going to be a showdown on Satan and there's nothing you can do about it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I want to pray along with us. Now, just while I was ministering, the Lord ministered to my heart and I'm going to give this instruction. Every one of you who is a life changer, you've believed in this calling and you've been following us joyously and gladly. The Lord ministered to me on the first of this month while we were praying. The Lord asked that I take a seed of everyone. And quite a number of them have started giving. And while I was ministering here, the Lord said, take that same offering from your people. Now, last year, we had testimonies, testimonies of brethren in the U.S. who gave in obedience when God said, take an offering from everyone in the ministry. We had testimonies of everyone who gave. Praise God. Business is transformed, health restored from different nations. People were healed. And again, the Lord just told us to do it. Praise God. So, there is no fixed amount, whatever the Lord lays in your heart. But do well to give, especially those of you who are connected to us. Okay? You either use that platform or call your counselor by using that number you already have and tell them to send you directly the contact, um, the details of what to do and they will direct you. And as you do that, you're going to write out the things you want to see and God is going to meet them one after the other. One after the other. Lift up your two hands everywhere and thank the Lord as we come to a close. And now I declare, and this is a word for the month. I declare that abundance of grace, an abundance of resources is at your disposal and is upon you now. You have abundance of grace to birth ideas from God and abundance of resources to make them manifest in the physical. Money will be available to you. Human help and resources will be available to you. Time will be in your favor everything will work together for your good because this month as much as you can believe and dare there's abundance of grace to bring you to pass and abundance of resources flowing to you many of you will find favor in the eyes of men they will give to you what you would have labored to gather yes the approvals you would have gotten by merit God is giving to you by favor this week they will double up your pay. They'll double up the opportunities. And say, hey, 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 we're giving you bonuses. You're supposed to meet this target, but now we're giving you bonuses. And God is going to make it happen. Because I've heard it and I've said it, so shall it be for you. In Jesus' name. Shall I have bonuses? And like I always say, that the service has ended doesn't mean the, the message has ended. The link already is available. Go back and use it and watch it and send it to your loved ones and listen over and over again. And use other platforms we have. We have the Life Changers Touch app on Google Play Store that has all the services available to you for free. We have Pastor Martin's Life where you can follow all the services of every teaching strictly on the teachings alone. Praise God. We have the Life Changers Touch on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitch, on Telegram, everywhere. Where you can follow life and be filled on the go and then we have the lcm college where you can of course get tutored I, i'm told some of you have already started the 
the college and I'm so impressed to know that you have studied. Praise God. Now, for whatever way you want to get to us, get to www.lifechangerstore.org and all of those platforms are there at a click and you get into what you want. Praise the Lord. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. I'll see you next Sunday. The Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his countenance to shine upon you. And it shall be a week filled with gladness and joy. And you will testify. I love you and I'll see you next Sunday. With somebody you have invited. God bless you. Bye bye.